Kanner International Airport IATA, CNN, ICAO, VOKN, is an international airport serving the district of Kanner, one of the northern districts in the state of Kerala, India. Spread about 2,300 acres 930 hectares, it is located about 25 kilometers 16 miles east of the city near the municipality of Matanur. It is owned and operated by Kanner International Airport Limited, a public-private consortium. The airport opened for commercial operations on the 9th of December 2018. The Kanner Airport is expected to serve more than 1 million passengers annually and authorities estimate the number will increase fivefold by 2025. The first aircraft to land was an IAF Indian Air Force aircraft that landed at the airport on the 29th of February 2016. The first trial passenger flight operation conducted on 20 September 2018 using a Boeing 737-800 aircraft from Air India Express. On the inaugural day, 9 December 2018, an Air India Express flight IC-715 Boeing 737-800 took off to Abu Dhabi at 10.13 east, which became the first commercial passenger aircraft to operate out of Kanner International Airport. The airport was inaugurated by Chief Minister of Kerala, Pinarayi Vijayan in the presence of Minister of Civil Aviation, Suresh Prabhu. Topic History Kanner had an airstrip used for commercial aviation as early as 1935 when Tata Airlines operated weekly flights between Bombay and Trivandrum, stopping at Goa and Kananur. The operator started the service to Kerala on 29 October 1935. The long-standing demand for an airport was only conceptualized in 1997, when C. M. Ibrahim the then Union Minister of Civil Aviation, backed the proposal for an airport in the district. The vast extent of land at Morkantparamba near Matanur was identified for the project a few months later following a hectic search for land for developing the proposed airport. The formal commencement of construction activities at the project site on 17 December at a function attended by Civil Aviation Minister Prafal Patel and Chief Minister E. K. Nayanar. Though the state government accorded sanction for the Kanner International Airport project in January 1998 and appointed Kerala Industrial Infrastructure Development Corporation as the nodal agency for its implementation, it had to wait for a decade till it was finally approved by the central government in January 2008. During the period, a private agency appointed by Kerala Industrial Infrastructure Development Corporation to study techno-economic feasibility report submitted its report. The earlier site proposed at Matayapara was dropped owing to ecological concerns. Two vast plateaus near Matanur were identified for the airport, namely Morkanparam and Veliamparam, with about 1,300 acres and 800 acres of land to be acquired from each respectively. After a prolonged wait, the airport received in principle approval from the Ministry of Civil Aviation and Union Cabinet in January 2008. Land acquisition began in December 2008 after issuing notifications and fixing compensation. The public company Kanner International Airport Limited KIAL, under the PPP model, was registered in October 2009. The foundation stone for the airport was laid on 17 December 2010 by then Chief Minister V. S. Achuthanandan. In 26 November 2013, KIAL and Larson and & Tubro Limited are scheduled to sign a contract on construction work at the airport. In January 2014, the Kerala State Government Minister for Excise and Ports announced the Kerala State Government and AAI plan to sign an MO on the equity structure of Kanner International Airport Limited. Construction work of the airport was inaugurated by Defence Minister and Senior Congress Leader A. K. Antony on February 2, 2014. In the 29th of February 2016, the first trial flight was landed and Chief Minister Uman Chandi flag off for the inauguration of runway. Kanner International Airport commenced operations on 9 December 2018. The first commercial aircraft to operate out of the airport was Air India Express IC-715 Boeing 737-3-800 to Abu Dhabi, which took off at 10.13 east on the same day. The flight was jointly flagged off by the Chief Minister of Kerala, Pinarayi Vijayan and Union Minister for Civil Aviation, Suresh Prabhu. Construction 
By August 2010 acquisition of about 1,200 acres of land was completed in two phases, and acquisition of another 780 acres was in progress for the third phase. In July 2011, the Uman Chandi government decided to make Airports Authority of India a consultant tasked with preparing a revised techno-economic feasibility report and a new master plan and design. As the Airports Authority of India failed to submit the report in time, the consultancy was cancelled and Cochin International Airport was entrusted to prepare the detailed project report, but the floating of tenders for construction was further delayed as experts found several technical flaws in the design prepared by CIAL. Land acquired by the government under KINFRA was transferred to KIAL earlier in February 2012. In August 2012, Mumbai-based company STUP Consultants Private Limited was made consultant to review the revised report by CIAL and to assist KIAL in other aspects of the project, but the agreement was cancelled within two weeks as it was found that the company had been blacklisted in other states. Fresh bids were solicited and Hong Kong-based AECOM Asia was awarded the consultancy. The project office was inaugurated at Matanor in December 2012. Topic EPCI and EPC2 It was decided to build the airport in two stages of engineering, procurement, and construction EPC. The first stage, EPCI included complete earthwork, runway, taxiway, apron, ground lighting and associated infrastructure such as perimeter and operational walls. The second stage, EPC2, involved the integrated terminal building, air traffic control tower, administrative and technical blocks, and facilities in the buildings such as aerobridges, escalators, elevators and counters. Infrastructure and engineering conglomerate Larson and Tubro L&T was awarded work for EPCI on 27 November 2013, after inviting bids. Airport work was flagged off by the then Defense Minister A.K. Antony at a public function in Matanor on 2 February 2014. L&T also won the tender for EPC2 works including the construction of the Passenger Terminal Building PTB on 25 June 2014. A huge amount of earthwork was carried out at the site including the cutting and filling of a total 2,340,000 cubic meters 3,060,000 CUYD of land at a maximum rate of 70,000 cubic meters 92,000 CUYD per day. About 50% of the land works and foundation and piling work for constructing the PTB and air traffic control tower were completed by March 2015. By August 2015 about 60% of the runway was completed. Steps were initiated to procure lifts, a baggage handling system, passenger boarding bridges, and the four airfield crash fire tenders. About 70% of the work on the runway, apron and associated work, and 52% of the PTB and allied work was completed by December 2015. Works for a 28,000 square meters 33,000 square YD fuel farm also began the same month. The then Kerala Airport's Minister K. Babu ruled out the popular demand to extend the runway to 4,000 metres 4, yards. Meanwhile, the third phase of land acquisition involving about 785 acres on Vellium Parm, which began in 2011, had been progressing at a very slow pace and only 612 acres were acquired in five years. The late decision to acquire more land for a runway extension from 3,050 metres 3, yards to 3,400 metres 3, yards on the western side, in the finishing stages of the project, triggered protests from residents. A trial landing was conducted on a completed 2,400 metres 2, yards runway by a 14-seater Code B aircraft on 29 February 2016. The air traffic control tower was not involved as it was still under construction. Technical assistance of the aviation control of the Calicut Airport was sought for the landing. No runway calibration, or testing of flight parameters, was done during the landing. The trial landing was organized as a major event by the authorities and involved extensive public participation. The Uman Chandi government faced fierce criticism for organizing such an event when the whole airport project was not complete. The opposition termed it an «election stunt» as Kerala was going to the polls in the coming months. Around 30 lakh rupees were spent on the event. By May 2016, the 3,050 metres 3, yards runway was completed with work on the 150 metres grading side strip on both ends progressing. 
68% of the PTB, 75% of the ATC tower and much of the work for the fuel farm was completed. Work on the ancillary buildings, fire rescue station, power house, the area for the India Meteorological Department IMD, sewage treatment plant, service block, and the airfield ground lighting substation were progressing. The newly elected Pinnery government decided to begin land acquisition to extend the runway to 4,000 metres 4, yards in August 2016. 82% of the construction of the PTB, and 90% of the work on air side was completed by February 2017. By September 90% of the work on the PTB and the city side works including flyover, PTB roofing etc. was completed. Time-consuming interior work on the PTB was in progress, runway and safety area works were to resume after the rains. The PTB is scheduled to be fully completed by September 2018. Topic phase 1 and Phase 2 The Phase 1 expansion period is from 2016-17 to 2025-26. It includes a 4,000 meters 4, yards runway extension, a full-length taxiway, commissioning of a fuel farm, an aviation academy etc. and developing city-side facilities. Works for the Phase 1 expansion are already progressing. A cargo terminal and cargo complex which was initially in Phase 2 has been shifted to Phase 1 and is under construction. The Phase 2 expansion will happen from 2026-27 to 2045-46. It includes another runway and a dedicated domestic terminal at Valiamparamba, and a long flyover to link it with Morkamparamba. Management. Kanner International Airport is the second greenfield airport to be built on a public-private partnership PPP platform in Kerala. The airport is managed by Kanner International Airport Limited KIAL, a public company. Former Air India Chief V. Thulasidas IAS is the current Managing Director of KIAL. Pinarayi Vijayan, Chief Minister of Kerala, holds the post of Chairman. The principal investor in KIAL, the Government of Kerala, owns 32.86% of the company's shares. Other shareholders are, 22.54% by state and central public sector undertakings, 9.39% by Airports Authority of India, 35.21% by others, including QIBs, individuals, companies, cooperative, banks, societies, and other legal entities as approved by the Board of Directors from time to time. Topic Facilities Topic Terminals The airport will have an integrated passenger terminal for both international and domestic travelers with a floor area of 97,000 square meters, 1,040,000 square feet for arrival and departure separately. It will be able to handle up to 2,000 passengers during peak hours with its unique swing facility. It features six aerobridges with 48 check-in counters, 32 emigration counters, 16 customs counters, four conveyor belts and access control inside the terminal. The passenger terminal will use the swing facility. The international gates will be used for domestic operations when there is no international flights. The passenger terminal building has a double skin aluminium roofing system and efficient LED lighting adopting the green building concept. A cargo terminal complex having a 8 floor space of 32,000 square meters, 340,000 square feet will also be constructed. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Airlines and destinations. Operational infrastructure Kanner Airport has one runway, 07, 25 which is 3,050 by 45 meters 10,007 by 148 feet. The 07, 25 runway orientation permits an obstacle-free approach. The runway 25 end will have category I approach lighting and the 07 end will have simple approach lighting. The runway will be extended to 4,000 meters feet after the airport is commissioned. Land acquisition of about 260 acres is underway for this purpose. 
The runway will have a full-length parallel taxiway and its apron will allow 20 wide-bodied aircraft to park at the same time. The airport's air navigation services and air traffic control will be handled by the Airports Authority of India AAI. The ATC tower will be equipped with Doppler variable omni range and distance measuring equipment, air traffic system automation, instrument landing system, voice recorder, GPS clock system etc. It will have VHF communication facilities and equipment for obtaining radar signals from the Cochin International Airport. The tower is 30 meters 98 feet high and has a floor area of 1,923 square meters 20,700 square feet. Various weather monitoring, weather forecasting and alert systems are being installed at the airport by the India Meteorological Department IMD. The Automated Weather Observing System AWOS for weather observations, is supplemented by climatological data, weather forecasting and aerodrome warning from IMD. The IMD will send minute by minute weather updates in the form of audio messages directly to pilots, instead of passing the information manually to the ATC and through them to the pilot. The information could include wind speed, gusts and direction, temperature and dew point, visibility, density, altitude, thunderstorm, lightning, etc., ensuring smooth aircraft operation. The airport will have a 300 meters (330 yards) long, 90 meters (98 yards) wide runway and safety area (RISA) on both ends of the runway. This reduces the risk of casualties and damage to aircraft in the event of an undershoot, overshoot, or excursion from the runway. The RISA is protected with a reinforced earth wall. The airport will have an isolation bay towards the 07 side. An isolation bay, with a diameter of 125 meters 137 yards, is a special parking space created for an aircraft facing an exigency like hijack or bomb threat. Various ground support equipment GSE will be available to service the aircraft between flights. This includes, dollies, chocks, aircraft service stairs, aircraft refuelers, transporters, catering vehicles, belt loaders etc. Ground handling in the airport will be managed by Air India Air Transport Services Limited. AIATSL Aviation fuel farm The airport has a 28,000 square meters (33,000 square yd) fuel farm constructed and operated as a joint venture company floated by KIAL and Bharat Petroleum Corporation Limited (BPCL), the BPCL KIAL Fuel Farm Private Limited. The 17 rupees crore fuel farm has underground tanks for aviation fuel storage and will provide fuel for aircraft operating from the airport. BPCL has a 170 rupees crore stake in KIAL. Topic <inaudible> MRO. <inaudible> Kanner Airport will have an aircraft maintenance, repair and overhaul unit MRO facility. A large maintenance terminal is dedicated for this. The facility is expected to cater to both narrow and wide-bodied aircraft. The MRO will undertake maintenance work on aircraft and their components, such as jet engines, landing gear, airframes and components etc. and will involve line maintenance and hangars. Enclaves The airport will have an Indian Navy Air Enclave on convert 10 acres of land. The location is a priority for the Navy since the Easy Himala Naval Academy, the only naval academy in India, and the largest in Asia, is just 60 kilometres away from the airport. Easy Himala is also a strategic defence location. The original demands for transfer of the 10 acres of airport land to the Navy included having a representative from Southern Naval Command on KIAL's board of directors, to set up the enclave. This was dropped by the Navy. The land was transferred to the Navy on a long-term lease against token rent for establishing the enclave. The Indian Air Force will have a presence at the airport with a separate enclave set up on 10 acres of land. Defence officials had approved the enclave in view of the airport's strategic location. Kanner Cantonment, the only Army cantonment in Kerala is 30 kilometres away from the airport. The land provided on a long-term lease, against a token rent, is located beside the operational apron of the airport. 
Work on the enclave's hangars and administrative buildings is underway. An enclave will be set up by Indian Coast Guard (ICG) at the Kandahar Airport to augment air surveillance along the coast. India's first Coast Guard Academy is located at Azikal, 36 kilometers (22 miles) from the airport. Considering this, the strategic location, and the proximity to the coast of the airport the ICG had sought 20 acres of airport land. The KIAL board authorized the airport's managing director to provide 10 acres on a long-term lease against token rent to establish the enclave. <laughs> <laughs> Aviation Academy An aviation academy will be set up in the airport by the Rajiv Gandhi Aviation Academy and Technology on two acres of land allotted for it. The institute will offer students courses in aeronautics and provide flight training. <laughs> HAL Helicopter Manufacturing Base Hindustan Aeronautics Limited HAL had sought airport land from KIAL to have a manufacturing base for helicopters. 80 acres of land had been allotted by the board to HAL in 2014. The HAL complex will include helicopter manufacturing for exporting, helicopter maintenance and repair, and a helicopter pilot training center. See also. Calicut International Airport Mangalore International Airport Cochin International Airport Trivandrum International Airport List of airports in Kerala Airports in India <laughs>